Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Rock Around the Clock Hall of Fame. I have to give credit to Jimmy Myers, known as Jimmy D. Knight, the co-writer of Rock Around the Clock with me. He passed on a few years ago, but through many years together, we had collected a lot of artifacts, and so I'm carrying on. This is not the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is the Rock Around the Clock Hall of Fame. That really sold millions and millions of records and put our company on the map. Now, while I'm here at the piano, I'm going to give you a little bit of a lesson on what the piano's part was in rock and roll music in the 50s. And I discovered that the root of the blues and the root of the soul music was boogie woogie. There are many other ways to dissect that rock and roll pie, the boogie woogie pie. You can go half up and half back. Two pieces that really impressed me. One was uh, Ray Charles. And the other guy that impressed me was Fats Domino. Now what you have there is the rolling came from the old Creo sound down in New Orleans, and that and this. It's called the rock and roll triplets. I had all that together before I was seven years old. Before Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, I was the piano player that laid down the formula for what people did on rock and roll records. Now, I was, I was born in 1940, so by 50, 51 and 52, being 10, 11 years old, uh, I heard a lot of the things that I had developed in records. So when it came time to be with Bill Haley, uh, first of all, I'll tell you how I met Bill Haley. I met him at a place called Carlin's Park when he came in with his group, the Saddlemen. And the Saddlemen were a country band playing black music. And that was really cool with us kids because we didn't like hillbilly music and we kept telling Bill, take off the cowboy hat and the boots and dress real cool and sing some of that rhythm and blues because that's what us kids are listening to. So he changed his style from country to a white man singing black music. And all of a sudden, without him realizing it, it became rock and roll. The bass player was going chicka 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 and you'd hear the slapping part for the rhythm. But then he added a drummer and he added a sax player, which was unheard of in a country band. And it became rock and roll and rockabilly. But when they recorded, the bass didn't come through the note, note wise, it came through with a clickety clackety sound. So I learned early on to cover a two octave run with the Bill Haley records. You don't hear the top part of the piano, you only hear a thundering bass. And this is what it's like. Now that was the predecessor to Rock Around the Clock. By the time Rock Around the Clock came about, I was only 14 and I was a hanger on with Bill Haley. I was there when it happened, but I wasn't with the Comets yet. A mailman brought in a song called Dance Around the Clock, a rough version of what Rock Around the Clock became. And Jimmy Myers, who was a publisher under the name of Jimmy D. Knight, said, you know, Kids are using a new phrase today called rock. Why don't we call it rock around the clock and put a boogie beat to it? One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock and rock. Get your but to make a long story short, even though Jimmy didn't do too much to the song, the mailman had most of it. His name was. Uh, Max Freeman, Jimmy is the one that changed the word to rock, and that's, in my estimation, what made that become the iconic rock and roll song of all time. I haven't been anywhere in the world in my concerts or shows where somebody said they never heard rock around the clock. During my career, I played on a lot of records. Uh, 
I have uh, what we call signature intros like this with Danny and the Juniors. When I met Jerry Lee Lewis, he was in 57, number one. And uh, he said, he had a big Cuban cigar. He said, you're pretty damn good, son, but I'm number one. And I said, yes, Jerry, because you had number one songs and a major record label to back them up. So anyway, he's been a friend of mine, but he's a very egotistical player. But I still admire him because we both are considered to be comparable in what we do. Uh, Here's some of the records that were popular for me. Uh, Bring Back the Music, Hey Baby, and uh, the version of Rock Around the Clock, which I co-wrote later on when we did it for Happy Days. I'm only the, write, the co-writer of the revised version with the original writer. And what I did was, Jimmy said, Joey, we need to update the lyrics so they make sense to a generation of young people. I said, well, let's start with the first, first verse. They don't know what glad rags are. Why don't you let me change it to blue jeans? He said, that's a good idea. So it's put on your blue jeans and join me, hon. Then I'll meet you in seventh heaven is another term. I said, Jimmy, that's a term that they use in jazz. Kids don't know anything about the 30s or 40s and the seventh heaven. Why don't you let me make the song put on, I mean, I'll join you in, seven, in rock and roll heaven. And that's a good idea. So I made a few changes like that, and we call it Rock Around the Clock Revised and I got 50% of the song for that little contribution. I'm very proud to be a co-writer of the revised and the new versions of Rock Around the Clock, which we just did a heavy metal version, a country version, and we did a hip hop version for the young people. Anyway, we're very proud of the arrangement because it's very difficult to take a song that's steeped in the 50s format with a three chord song and make it applicable for today's audience, uh, which is basically uh, interested in the boom, boom, boom theory, I call it, because all the, a lot of songs today, instead of the offbeat, mm -mm, bah, mm -mm, bah, 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 it's bam, 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 boom, boom, boom. So I gave him plenty of boom, boom in my new version. Moving right along, this part's going to be quick. Up there, you'll see part of my 75 vinyl records all the way around the top. Look, at, watch my finger, because you can see what I'm talking about when I point all the way around. That Vintage Ballads album had Hey Little Moonbeam on it. Now, when I saw my ears sticking out on my first album in 1959, I decided I would never have a picture taken again with my ears showing. And I have been a long hair ever since. <laughs> and uh, way before the hippies did it, and I, my hair wasn't down on my belt or anything like that, but I've been part of the hippie generation in my appearance all my life because to me, uh, the ears sticking out looked like Dumbo the elephant ready to take flight. This is a plaque that I got for Patriotic Song of the Year. When the Twin Towers fell, I'm the one that wrote the song the day America cried. And I did a narration on it. It became a top 20 song independent chart-wise, and President Bush sent me two letters of accommodation, and the CMA gave me the uh, Patriotic Album of the Year Award. This is what the comments look like today. We're all with our makeup on, trying to look like teenagers, and I'm trying to look cool with my glasses. The glasses that I wear happen to be prescription. Uh, I can see to drive without glasses, but when it comes time to reading lyrics or something like that for reading, I need the glasses. So I'm not trying to be cool, but that's at one of the casinos we played a few years ago. Remember, Bill Haley died in 1981. And when he died, I put together the comets as they were in 1981 with Rudy. Rudy had passed away in 77, but we got a sax player, but I used the drummer and Al Rappa, the original bass player, and the guitar player, Franny Beecher, and myself. And we went up to the Tomorrow Show with Tom Snyder, and four days after he had died, I was privileged to sing a um, medley of his songs in, in four and a half minutes. That's all we had, or five minutes at the most. 
So I sang Rock Around the Clock, Shake Run and Roll, See You Later, Alligator, Rock a Beat and Boogie, and Rock the Joint, all within five minutes with the original Comets. And it was me that had the idea that took them to the television, and the, the NBC switchboard lit up, and clubs from all over America said, wow, Bill Haley's Comets, we want him back. And that was the first idea that we had, that we could do it without Bill Haley. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored to sing them. Here I am, the kid of the group, hanging on in 54 and 55, and I'm ending up singing on in concerts all the Bill's hits. This is really the important part here. This came out after we did the revised version of Rock Around the Clock. Same uh, CMA uh, award naming Jimmy Myers, who is Jimmy DeKnight, the original writer of Rock Around the Clock, and Joey Wells, the co-writer, Songwriters of the Century. And I had 10 top 10 country records at that time. I went in the 90s, I went purely country. I had Rockabilly, One Way Ticket, Heading for Armageddon, uh, Nashville Boogie. And we did a show called the uh, Nashville Now, which was TNN and Ralph Emery. So uh, I had the support of TNN and I was able to get 10 top 10 records with the original writer. particular record here was Last Kiss. Where, where can my baby be? I did it before. Uh, who brought it back? Who brought back Last Kiss? It was just brought back in the, uh, ten, 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Yeah, Pearl Jam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I did it before Pearl Jam. There's Frankie Avalon and I. This is their catalog of the most famous recordings that I produced for the label, including the Bill Haley album. In Germany, when they came over, I recorded them, and that's when I first did Shake, Run, and Roll and played on Rock Around the Clock, was in 62. I was the same age as the Beatles then, and I'm the same age, basically, as the Beatles are living today, the, the Beatles that are living. And the Comets, being 12 and 15 years older than me, didn't like the Beatles. They said, they're nothing. They're not going to become stars. They're just taking American rock and roll, singing Chuck Berry songs, singing... Uh, Little Richard songs with an English accent. But I thought they were cool for some reason, and they thought I was cool, and I was hanging out with the Beatles, and they were telling all their friends, we're hanging out with Joey Wells from the Beatles. John Lennon says, Joey, we want to come to America. What do you think of our name, Silver Beatles? I said, John, I never saw a Silver Beetle. They're gold and green. It don't matter what color they are, we stomp on them. We don't like the bugs. No, Joey, it's vital, vital, B-E-I-T-L. Oh, John, well, you keep the beat in there and you drop the silver, you don't need it, you'll be all right. So after that, I'm sure that John Lennon went to Sir Paul McCartney and said, I was talking with Joey Wells from the comments, and he said, we don't need the name silver in, uh, silver in the front of our name. And he said to keep the beat in there. And I don't know what Paul said, but knowing Paul the way I do, his favorite word, I think he probably said, brilliant will be the Beatles. And from that time on, even in Germany, they called themselves the Beatles. Could it be that Joey Wells named the Beatles? So I've written over 2,500 songs, and I've made over 2,000 recordings of it. Back to Arkansas, hey, hey, what I say, hey, hey, rock and roll, say, say, oh, yeah. This is where I run the whole operation in the world. 
We are a world-class label, and I run it right from here. So this is my office. So you don't need to be in New York to run a record label because if you have the computer, international calling for nothing almost if you have a plan. There's uh, one of my posters. That's what it looked like when I worked out. What happened to me? <laughs> oh. uh -oh. <laughs> this is the, the vocal booth. It's stamped down here. Here, here, here is the... Uh, What's left of my vinyl records? I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. On Blueberry Hill, where I found you. And you don't have a record company unless you can show the original tapes. There they are. Paul Simon is in there. Santone Johnny's in there. Linda Scott's in there. All the original tapes. This is where it all happens in here. One, two, one, two, three, rock and roll. Hey, rock and roll. A drum shake, rattle and roll. Come on, shake, rattle and roll. Yes, yeah, shake, rattle and roll. But let's shake, rattle and roll. What brought you to the area? You're not originally from here. No, I'm from you? Baltimore. Yeah, what brought yeah. you to Lidditz? My mother was sick. She was getting mugged. She was in her 80s at the time. And I took her for a ride. She had Alzheimer's. I had everything prearranged. I had a little house on the property up there that I rented for at United Zion. And she forgot that she was not in Baltimore. She thought she was still in Baltimore living in a smaller house. Okay. And so I sold the house there and she never looked back. She lived for many years. I took her to church and, uh, and uh, McDonald's. She loved McDonald's. And so instead of coming up, you know, myself from where I lived, uh, I decided to buy a little house here. Brought my company to Lidditz in 1990 okay. in the uh, red brick building behind the General Sutter Inn. So you're one of the pioneers of the boogie woogie rock and roll. One of the pioneers, but uh, you, you know, I, I listened to Fat Domino, make sure okay. that he was there before me. Yeah. But I took the blues and added all the boogie woogie riffs that I could formulate to create what the piano player's job was in the 50s. And I, of course, it sounds old now, but that was rock and roll. When rock and roll first came about, the style that I had, many people adapted to play in the 50s. I, I would like to suggest you go to YouTube and look at Joey Wells live in Berlin. There's a theater there and all the Germans are in the audience, over 500, and I'm there with a little electronic piano on stage. And I did it on the electronic piano. I played the hell out of it and I got standing ovation from them. And it'll show you what I do and it'll show you that people are interested still in someone like me. And it's not really Joey Wells, it's what I represent. Make sure you put that in there, because I don't want people to think I'm egotistical, because I'm really not. I realize that I'm representing rock and roll, and I realize that I'm part of it, but it's not Joey Wells, especially with the new song. It's the iconic rock around the clock that's the big news. And I'm glad to even to be able to touch it, proud. I was curious if you saw any of the counterculture movement of the 1960s as it was coming, you know, rock and roll was really evolving with the Beatles coming in and well, sounds were changing. Of course, and that's what a lot of people probably don't understand and that don't know better. At least I'm known, oh, there's Joey Wells, he's a museum piece, he's a legend from the old rock and roll band. 
I never wanted to be that, and so I wasn't. I put out records according to what uh, was happening. Like Link Ray and I had an album that was a very anti, I uh, was a protest song about the war, and it was called Listen to the Voices That Want to Be Free. And I wrote a lot of songs and put out a lot of records according to what was happening generation by generation. I never allowed myself just to become a museum piece. I made 75 45s, 60 album, vinyl albums, and I made over 100 CD albums. A lot of my old stuff has been re-released. You saw it in there in the kitchen. A, a lot of great songs that I put out were, were timely. And I still, I wrote the thing for the Twin Towers with uh, uh, when that happened. We, we as songwriters feel that we can save the world and help heal with a song. And that's why I write songs with the current times. I did a song called Plug That Hole, which was for the big thing in the ocean that was squirting up all the, killing all the marine life and all. Plug the Hole was there. I put a song for, I made a song for uh, Haiti when they had their uh, problem of famine and, and all, called Hey, Hey, Haiti. I can't walk by the piano without playing something. That concludes our tour of the Rock Around the Clock Hall of Fame. <laughs>